We are working with a musical metaphor of how hummingbirds, bumblebees, butterflies move among flowers. And this is our picture. They can be paused, kind of crawling around or hovering and feeding. They can be fluttering, fluttering around and maybe landing again. They can be fluttering around and saying, oh, look, there's another flower. And they can land and crawl around on that for a bit. And then they can say, oh, and they flit over here for a little bit. Hummingbirds flit for sure. Bumblebees maybe take a little longer to get there like that. So the point is that we have, we want musical metaphors for being kind of paused and kind of moving. And the metaphors we've been working with, this stream and last, are uh, changing the mode have a minor scale, a major scale, or using the full scale, and also changing the root of the scale, which is called modulation. So we spent some time comparing the scale that's used in Flight of the Bumblebee by Rimsky-Korsakov. His home scale is F-sharp minor, and this is what it looks like. It has F-sharp as the first note, the root, and it goes G-flat A, which is the mode, a minor mode. Da, 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 da. It has a B, then it has the center note. Da, 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 da. It has an urge note, which comes right after the da, uh, 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 and comes up here, and then finally it goes off to the F-sharp octave, which we're not showing. And so, like all regular scales, there's a root, the first note, and there's a mode, which is minor or major, there's a center note, and then there's an urge note. And what we had learned from our research in the previous stream is that the B starts in F-sharp minor, it changes the root to, from an F-sharp to an A, and then it also changes from F to a B. And then we spent a little time examining what are the musical theory implications of all that, and then we hurriedly passed on. <sighs> this was our napkin diagram trying to help us with that. It turned out that there's even many other ways that the traditional scales, this is, if we're looking at C instead of F sharp, this is what a C scale looks like. You know, it starts on a C, da, 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 no, da, 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 do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do, do, re, mi, that's a major mode, do, re, mi, that's the minor mode, so it has two modes, do, re, mi, fa, so, there's the center note, that's the urge note in the minor scale. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do, So that's the urge note. So if you look at the full C diatonic scale, where you take the minor plus the major, which is the traditional Western stuff, you have two modes and two urges. Well, we're using an untraditional scale, T2662, C2662. Nevertheless, it has a minor and a major scale, so it has two modes, and it has two urges, and it has a center note, and it has a C, a root, and an octave. So that was all cool. <clears throat> but we had to make up our mind. How are we going to modulate? And we did. We said, we're going to modulate from C to D and C to G flat. And it turns out that when we do that, there are some points of similarity, and we're just going to wave our hands. There are some music theory points of similarity there. So we, we made up our mind how to modulate. And we already knew how to change mode, because in our last stream, we had composed C26 minor melodies and C62 major melodies. So that's how we kind of entered into uh, today's stream. We had to make a new reference sheet. This is C2662. 
But when we jump it up to half tones, it sounds like this. Hear the difference? And uh, then if we go to G, G flat, it goes even higher. And so he said, yay, because with, with changing the root, we can use the idea of moving the bumblebee higher and higher and higher if we go in the other direction, lower and lower and lower, just because the actual root is going higher or lower. And these scales come with the full set of chords that we can work with. So literally, we've tripled the scale, the, the chords that we can work with in our transitions. So now we have changing the mode, minor, major, full uh, mode, and we have C, D, and G flat for root change. And so we compose some root changes that sound like this. And we felt that was fluttering. And then we did a, f um, a f uh, what did we do? Do we have any fluttering? Didn't we do any fluttering, fluttering down here? Then we did some, um, come on, where are you? Mode changes where this is, it's starting to come off the flower and getting ready to go somewhere to flit. This is an example where we went to minor, major, uh, and changed the mode. And then down here, um, we stayed entirely within the 2662 mode. And that's hovering. It's still moving a little bit. You like the B, like that. We also did a, uh, we, we felt like we had jam-packed this score. This score is now called the transitions model because it has all the different ways we can indicate movement, you know, pausing, slow movement, hovering, or fast movement. And um, we can do it with fast notes down here, really fast notes. And we can use different energies just by changing the, uh, the chord selection. And we can also change the, the rhythm and the tempo. So we felt like literally we have an embarrassment of riches. How are we going to pick and choose from all of these different ways to indicate changes and motions? And, and is it really, are we really telling a story about bumblebees and hummingbirds or, or what? So we then kind of stepped back and said, okay, what was our big idea in the first place? Our big idea in the first place was, uh, well, these two pictures, these concept sketches. And, and, um, and we spent some time and we realized that we have mm, three, three other concept pictures. So we said, well, let's, let's move from the big idea. Let's move back and try to compose uh, a story. And this is the story and an image that goes with it. The story is that we extend beyond time and space. We emerge and expand in arcs. We exist in a spiritual physical interface. Our personalities are many. Our personalities emerge in response to inner and outer drives. We relate to others in many orbits. And for each of these, we had kind of a its own picture that helped us compose that. So this is the composite picture that we like the most, but we're going to hide it. This is one of the pictures that correlates to we emerge and expand in arcs. Like that. And then there's the arcs. And what are we expanding and emerging from? Well, let's see. Let's, let's continue the story. So then we had another image. Well, here's one. 
we talked about personas. Our personalities are many. So <clears throat> we talked about the idea of a meta persona. So, so in this example, somebody is a clarinet player at one point in their life, and somebody was a physics major at a point in their life, and they were a boy, and they were raised in a single home, and all of those have different flavors and tones that come with them, but whoever or whatever those were, those are in the past, and there's kind of a central core persona that has elements of those, but is beyond that. It is emerged from that. That's kind of, it came from that, but it has gone, you know, maybe that was way back here somewhere, but many, many, many new things have happened, many, many things. So there's this emerging, emerging. So, okay, now we're getting an idea in our musical story. We're gonna have like a core rumbling and then it's going to push out and emerge into a new broader rumbling and push out and emerge and so forth. And we certainly could create that image with some of the some of the work that we've uh, already played for you. And, and here's a different way of looking at that rumbling in the middle and then emerging. And, and the idea is now our personalities emerge in response to inner and outer drives. So some of this rumbling is when we come to perceive ourselves as a separate from others you know, who are out here kind of. So there's us and then there's the rest of the world. And we kind of have innate interests and talents that want to be realized. And then we also are interacting with others and are interdependent with them and of necessity have to respond to what they ask of us. <clears throat> For example, take out the garbage. And then um, the other idea of the moving and transitioning is this, uh, we relate to others in many orbits. And as we come to realize there are others that we interact with and respond to, um, some of them are very, very close to us. We see all the time or naturally live with. Some of them we're close to. Um, see every day in different environments. Some of them, uh, as we get older and start working, we expand the, the relationships, you know, professors, uh, colleagues at work. Some of them we just encounter once in a while or just are in the distant periphery horizon of, of who we come to know. And so we relate to others in many different orbits. So those are some of the concept pictures that are in the background of using this as our selected summary picture. We extend beyond time and space. We emerge and expand in arcs. We exist in a spiritual physical interface. Our personalities are many. Our personalities emerge in response to inner and outer drives. We relate to others in many orbits. So our task now becomes constructing that. <clears throat> so we'll probably end up soon making a story model and and use bits and pieces from oh my gosh all the cadences we came up with so far all the melodies we've come up with so far and of course now all the transitions that we've come up with so far that we were playing today so let's just close out by reviewing what we have in place these are our root change uh, elements today this is a fluttering a rising to flit and a flitting and arrived jarring. These use modulation. Here's a root change where we're flitting back, flitting and arriving, gentle questioning. And let's see how that sounds.
you can also hear rhythm changes in there. And that was something we we spent time cleaning this diagram up that in addition to the to the root change and the mode change, we can change rhythms. Um, so we added that. So this is becoming a very good reference diagram for us, this this melody and modulation and B fast. So then what? Well then now here are some mode changes. We're every in every case we're going from a minor to a major mode, and this we felt expresses rising to flit. And then here we have fluttering. Just going back and forth, fluttering uneasy. Or it just could be fluttering. I don't know if it needs to be called uneasy. We'll leave it that way. And then here we have fluttering and landing. So those were mode changes. And then here, one of our options is also cadence or chord changes. And these are all in the 2662 full tonality. So we were just looking at minor, major, minor, major, minor, major. Now we're selling into the full tonality of C2662. And then another is fast notes. And not only the fast notes, but we can start on a higher pitch. We can also change from a 2-2 two -two time to a 3 time. It's still pretty fast, so we can also go slow. So those are the um, techniques we have in our transitions model from which we can start to use like a painter's palette and, uh, and painting that story, that poem that we kind of wrote today. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your time and attention and we look forward to seeing you in the next stream. And as always, keep on streaming.